there will be one million unfilled tech jobs in the United States in the coming years. One million. It's a lot of jobs. You guys have already heard it referenced here today. Pundits are calling this projected supply and demand gap the tech talent crunch. And it's already gotten started. According to Glassdoor research, there are currently more than 250,000 unfilled tech jobs costing the economy more than $20 billion annually. Those numbers may help to explain why one third of HR budgets are dedicated to recruiting and retaining tech talent and why 90% of executives list just that as one of their top challenges. Two years ago, I founded a school that helps people from non-traditional backgrounds start careers in technology to help fill that gap. And I've come to believe that the tech talent crunch may be exactly the crisis the industry needs to reboot itself for the road ahead. Our world is being fundamentally changed by software. Tech giants like Google and Facebook have obvious impacts, but there are countless other less flashy changes happening in virtually every part of our daily lives. Most of you in the audience probably use online banking. I'm guessing the majority of you have probably called an Uber from your smartphone, and the really brave early adopters amongst you might sidle into the self-checkout lanes at the grocery stores every once in a while. <laughs> the point is, technology has become central to company operations across the board, and that's changing not just how we as consumers are interacting with these organizations, but it's also changing about how they think about building the teams that they need to run their businesses. In getting ready for today's talk, I pulled up some job listings locally in Minneapolis for JavaScript, which is one of the foundational technologies of the web and something we focus on at my school. And I found companies hiring full-time software engineers in the following industries. Accounting, data security, education, government, home furnishings, hospitality, insurance, logistics, manufacturing, marketing, media, medical and dental care, software, sports, research, restaurants, and retail. So that's at least two breaths worth of industries. And that is in the first four out of 63 pages of results. So over two thirds of computing jobs are now outside what most of us would think of as tech companies. The tools that you'll all use in the future to shop, to access healthcare, to connect with your family, to get your news, to travel, and to put food on your table, both figuratively and literally, are being created right now by designers and engineers in all of these different industries. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that the future of everything is being written in code. If those are the stakes, who's behind those keyboards? This is what the typical programmer looks like according to an annual survey done by a company called Stack Overflow. They are 89% male, they're 88% white and Asian, and the average age is 28. 75% of these people studied computer science in college before starting their careers. So these numbers paint a portrait of technology generally that looks a lot like Silicon Valley, both the place and the cast of the HBO TV show. Um, <laughs> Demographically, developers represent only a fraction of our population, but beyond that, the majority have spent their entire careers in software. The people that are creating software to revolutionize all of these industries are routinely working with very little, if any, personal context of the sectors they're seeking to disrupt. And none of this is new, but as we scramble to address those one million unfilled tech jobs, I believe that we all need to agree that the future of everything is too important to put in the hands of a small group of people just because they know how to code. I think the future demands more than that. I believe that organizations need to build teams inclusive of the audiences they aim to serve. Studies have shown that organizations with diverse management teams are 35% more likely to have financial returns above their industry mean and are more likely to develop new products and innovations. And I absolutely believe that this principle transfers whole cloth into software development. And I think it comes down to a topic that we've heard about today already, which is empathy. In my school, one of our core beliefs is that empathy beats engineering. Simply put, a well-engineered solution to a problem that you don't understand very well is not likely to be a success. By building a team that can establish meaningful, active empathy with their users, companies can better understand and serve their needs. I've seen what can happen, what can be accomplished by developers and designers who understand their audience. I've seen language apps created by developers who spent years teaching English abroad. I've seen store inventory systems developed by engineers who started their careers in retail. And I've seen mental health tools created by people whose lives have been touched by mental illness. In each of these cases, the life experience and the user empathy led to a better product developed more quickly and for lower cost. And while it would be great if that argument alone sparked a revolution in the industry to embrace a more inclusive hiring strategy, 
we might not have to wait for enlightenment to spark the change. At the end of the day, there aren't enough programmers to go around, so luckily, companies have to think of different ways to approach things. The explosion of demand and technology colliding with a wholly inadequate talent pipeline is exactly the crisis we need to shock a complacent industry into changing their entrenched ideas and practices around hiring. Whether to intentionally build a more inclusive team or simply to keep up with the demands of an increasingly digital world, companies are having to re-examine their processes in order to tap a broader pool of talent. Right now, while the demand is so high and the supply so low, we have a unique window to retrain the industry to embrace talent that can help them build teams that can develop empathy with their users. That opportunity has helped to fuel a new breed of immersive accelerated learning programs that are helping to bring un, under, and unhappily employed people from diverse backgrounds and demographics into the tech sector. Tech boot camps, as they're sometimes called, first appeared about five years ago, but this year more than 100 programs will graduate 23,000 people into the industry. That's about a fifth of people coming from traditional sources, so it's starting to really make an impact. In these programs, students are typically spending about five months studying, most of it 60 to 80 hours a week, building skills in software engineering, user experience design, and other in-demand areas. It might sound a little crazy, you quit your job and you dedicate basically every waking moment to learning, but it's working. Nearly 90% of the grads from my school start careers in tech within six months, and other programs across the country have similar success rates. So how do these candidates look relative to the average developer? They're 57% male, they're 79% white or Asian, and the average age is 30. So demographically, boot camp grads are more inclusive than the industry, but the biggest difference is the diversity of backgrounds and the fact that the vast majority of these people are coming from outside of technology. Students hail from a wide variety of industries, but some of the most strongly represented are retail, education, finance, and healthcare, all of which are industries that are being actively disrupted by software and where insights from the field could be terrifically relevant. If the tech industry wants to rise to the challenge of reinventing our world, Accelerated learning must be part of the solution alongside other efforts to diversify the STEM talent pipeline. Graduates of these programs can help organizations to diversify their demographics and backgrounds of their teams immediately while bringing valuable context from a variety of different industries that can help ground innovative digital solutions with real world experience. The challenge of filling those one million jobs is an opportunity for technology to reinvent itself. We can choose to elevate empathy for users and bring the human side of software development to the forefront. All that's required is for organizations to think critically about who belongs on the teams that will build the future for their companies and for their users. They need to embrace non-traditional candidates who may bring the context and empathy to the table that can help. I know firsthand that there's an army of untapped, smart, capable people out there waiting to help change the world with software. We just need to give them a chance. Thank you. Thank you.